G'day ladies and gentlemen and hope you're all doing well. Welcome to a new video and a crippled edition of Question and Answer. So I haven't been making videos a lot lately and you guys know about my current circumstances and so I decided to ask you guys to ask me some questions on all three platforms, so Facebook, uh, Instagram and YouTube and so I got way over like 160 questions when I answered so obviously a lot of them were the same so I'll narrow them all down but um, obviously appreciated everyone's support so far with uh, with recovery. Um, I'm getting there, I'm working on cars again now so it's, it's, all, it's all healing up. I get this cast off in two weeks and I start my rehab, so very exciting. And we're almost at 9,000 subscribers. That is insane, insane to think that there's 9,000 people subscribed to the channel, almost. So thank you all so much. Without further ado and procrastinating, I'm gonna go sit in the patrol because it's uh, really windy today, but it's a really nice day. I'll show you the GU actually, guys. I put this the snorkel back to stainless. Uh, I wonder if you guys like it. Oh, I really like it, to be honest. Tell me what you think. I think it looks better. It looks better when it's, the sun's actually on this side, but. I think it looks better with stainless. It was I had that shitty black paint that was all crumbling off and that, but it looks much better now. So yeah, I'm gonna go sit in the patrol. I'm gonna start answering your questions. So I've got a lot to get through, and uh, hopefully I answer all your questions. I mean, I've I've been through every single question, guys. So if I haven't answered your question, someone's probably asked the same one. So yeah, we'll go on the patrol and we'll get to it. I got the GoPro on my phone, guys, just to uh, make sure there's no glare, uh, so I can just see the picture. The last thing I want to do is go through an hour of talking, and then I have a dot in the middle of my face or something. Last time I had glare across my face for like the first 15 minutes and I did my head in. Just like to be a bit more <laughs> on top of things now. Well, watch it, watch it glare now. I've got the window down on this side. I've got the windows cracked on the other side just to make sure a bit of wind might come through but just to make sure there's no glaring off the glass. I think we're ready to go. I'll start with, uh, well, we've got the Instagram questions here first and then we've got the YouTube ones but so we'll get right into it. So first question is from uh, Josh underscore Cartelli. Hello, Josh. He said three favorite YouTubers and why. Now, <clears throat> it's a hard one. I don't. I don't try and watch a lot of mainstream YouTube, like uh, obviously like Adam LZ and um, and like Cletus. And I, I try and watch more relatable stuff to what I do. And the channels I watch aren't very small either. They're just you know more relatable and just yeah. They're like production isn't over the top. You know, like four wheel drive action. That uh, production's like really really high in that. I like just you know just average stuff when people pick up a camera and film what they do. So my first favorite YouTuber would be a guy called Musty One. Uh, for all of you that don't know who Musty One is, he's a guy, he's probably in his late 50s and he just works on absolutely anything. He'll pick something up from a yard sale, whether it's a big engine, a tractor, small engine, any old car from the 70s. And if he doesn't know how to work on it, he won't Google it, he won't get an instruction, instruction manual, he will just open it up and learn that way. And I think that's so cool and he's really relatable and he's just such a chill guy. He just opens things up and if something goes wrong he just laughs and he's like, oh well, whatever, uh, he's awesome. My second favourite YouTuber would have to be probably Kevin from Junkyard Digs. Uh, Junkyard Digs is awesome because um, something that I really want to do in the future is just revive classic cars, get old cars going that have been sitting in the bush for years and years and years. Junkyard Digs is really good like that. He just goes out, he's a really knowledgeable guy and he's 20, 24 years old and he just <clears throat> goes out and he gets anything that's old you know, sitting in farms for 40, 50 years running. And um, he's really knowledgeable on carburetors and stuff and he's just a really cool guy. And uh, yeah, Kevin from Junkyard Digs is definitely a close second to Musty. My third favorite YouTube channel would be probably Kevin Talbot. Kevin Talbot is an RC, because you guys know I'm heavily into RC. He's an RC YouTube channel. Uh, he's really cool. He's just, you know, no fucks given type of guy. He just likes to have fun with RC cars, doesn't care what anyone thinks, and he's just really cool. Does really cool things with RC cars and really motivated me to get back into RCs like I did when I was a kid. So, yeah, they're definitely my top three YouTubers, and there's a lot of close YouTubers in that, a lot of BMX channels and that, but, um, yeah, top three, definitely those. So Jack Gordon 5038 says, thoughts on Land Cruisers? Uh, I get this question a lot and everyone thinks because I own a patrol, I don't like Land Cruisers. And the question is, Land Cruisers I like just as much as patrol. So my two favorite four Bs are 80 series and GU patrol. So before, when my when my uh, white patrol blew up, I originally wanted to get an 80 series, uh, like a, a 4.5 80 series and then do a turbo 4.5 80 series. Then I wanted to always convert the patrol and then I got this, so it sort of just happened. But Land Cruisers, 100%. I like the older style. I don't like new Land Cruisers. I don't like 200 series. I like the old, um, like the FJs. I like the, the 60 series, the 80 series. I do like the 105s. They're pretty cool. Uh, they're sort of like, sort of like a GU. But yeah, um, Land Cruisers are good. And Jack also asks, are you going to put an aftermarket rear bar in the Patrol? Um, yeah, eventually. Right now I've got the stock bar, of course. But before before me, um, the owner before this had a, actually a nice uh, rear bar on it that had a, like a plate across it and it had 5.7 
5.7 litre etched into the rear, so it looked pretty nice, but I didn't, I didn't end up getting that bar off him. But I want to get the, because uh, i got the rock sliders in the front, I want to get the scrub bar started, then I get the rear bar. I don't want to go too crazy with the bar work, but yeah, definitely get a nice rear bar for it. Punchies underscore bus, he said, would you ever come up to Coffs Harbour and hit some tracks? Uh, 100%, I'd go anywhere and hit any track. Uh, anywhere I can in this car, I want to set it up so I can go long range as well. Um, I'd love to go anywhere, just like the guys from four wheel drive action, to just drive everywhere all over the country. Um, that'd be cool. One day when everything opens up, obviously past COVID, yeah, we'll just get into like getting a crew together and just go on long, long road trips and just having fun. So yeah, 100% love to come up the coughs. The tracks up there look amazing too. So I'd love to experience more of the country. So Seb H20 man, hello Seb. He asks, new car interest or cars you would buy for the right price? Now, new car interest, not so much. Um, something I really want to get on the channel is like an old truck. Um, that's something that's been really interesting to me, like an old 60s Dodge or something and have like a big flat banana bed so I can like load up the cars on the back of it, take them to drift events in like an old 60s truck, that'd be cool. Uh, new car interest, I'm not into new cars at all. Um, I'm interested in the new 400Z, that looks cool. The 400 horsepower uh, V6 manual, it's gonna be. Uh, twin turbo, so that's gonna be interesting, pretty cool. Nissan stick into their roots, so that's gonna be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that. Like I've driven like new Supras and that, they're pretty cool, but they do nothing for me. But yeah, I'm not really into sort of newer cars. There's some new cars that sort of tick the boxes, like supercars and that. Nah, new cars are a bit too plasticky for me. I like old old cars that just have character and just, you know, one with the machine. So Gabe545 underscore X, he says, how much power is the patrol running? Now, this is a hit and miss because the old owner told me it made 320 or 340 horse. I can't remember. It was one of those numbers. I'm going to say 320 uh, on at the rears on 35. Now, 320, I don't know. People that come in this car reckon it makes around that. I don't know. I won't know until I get it dyno because I'm not going to take the old owner. I haven't got dyno shit. Just, you know, to prove I'm not going to take the old owner's word. Um, but it's bloody quick. It is quick for what it is. So um, I'm going to say even around 300 horsepower, maybe. But uh, we'll definitely do a dyno. The old owner that actually built this car actually wants to put it on his dyno and uh, tune it for economy and get some power out of it. So... Yeah, we definitely see the numbers then uh, of what this thing makes at the wheels. Finn underscore Murph underscore, he says, what car you wish you never sold? Now, this one hits close to home. Uh, there are a lot of cars that I wish I never got rid of, and I've had a lot of cars in my time, a lot. But one that stands out to me the most was my, I had a twin turbo uh, Mitsubishi VR4 Legnum uh, wagon. That was the cool, it was actually, it was a car I sold to get into four-wheel driving, and I, I wish I never sold it, but I, it was the best daily, it was twin turbo, it made 220 kilowatts, I'll put a photo of it up, had Evo Brembo's, Evo front mount, it just drove so smoothly, I went on a road trip with my girlfriend, and it was just such a nice car. The only downfall is it just used a lot of fuel, had a small fuel tank, it's just common in them. A very close second to that, I had a BMW E30, yes, I had a Euro, I love Euros too. Uh, I had a BMW E30, uh, it was a 316i import from the UK, so it was really rare, sunroof it was a beautiful car i dailyed that for about i had about six months daily that and um i ended up selling it to get the legnum but uh that was a car it was a cool car it was a manual 1.6 liter had no balls it sounded grouse it had a beautiful sound system it looked nice had good road presence but yeah i miss i miss that car dearly dearly another one i missed that i wish i'd ever sold i had an atlas 400 lexus that was my daily it was a v8 uh one uz uh, four liter V8. Uh, it you could balance a coin on top of it, and it was it was the smoothest car. My mates would come with me; they'd fall asleep in it. It was like a couch. Had nice fat wheels on it. I uh, got defected in it once, and um, yeah, I just sold it because it just I got over it. And um, but I'd love another one in the future. But out of all of them, yeah, my Legnum. Uh, I, I've had stages. I've had a million thirty ones. I've had other VLs. I've had uh, oh, I've had so many cars. I've had Crusaders. <clears throat> Excuse me. Definitely, definitely the uh, the Legnum is the one I miss the most. And if I um, Definitely expand the channel, I'll definitely get another one and I'll get a manual one this time. So Baleen underscore 13, he says, what would be the next set of mud tires you get for the patrol? Uh, I haven't really looked into it, honestly. Um, there's some pretty aggressive mud tires out there. Uh, I wouldn't mind putting some uh, some Coopers on there, um, some mud slingers, because at the moment it's got the centipedes on there and they're pretty aggressive at the moment. But um, yeah, we'll see what's out there. There's uh, like the BF Goodriches and that, that obviously I've run before and they've been pretty good, but I've only run them in the in the all terrain. So uh, we'll see once these tires wear down because they don't really make centipedes anymore. So it's hard to get them. So uh, I'll definitely have to be getting another set of mud tires to put on the uh, the beadlocks. So Joe Dot Yamuni says, is anything for sale? Uh, God, I know I know people always say like everything's for sale at the right price. To me, uh, I, I worship uh, sentimental value a little bit more than uh, money. Cars to me, it's like if you sell them in today's market, you might not ever get that car again. So you really need to think twice if you really want to sell a car. If you're desperate for the money, it's it's 100% like sell it. Why not? But in my collection, no, nothing's for sale. Um, if I was to sell a car, like, because I really needed the money, um, I would definitely probably get rid of the XR Falcon because I just haven't got an attachment to it because I've only had, I've had it nearly two years now, oh, about a year and a half now, uh, nearly nearly two years, and I just I haven't done anything to it, so I haven't built up an attachment like all the other cars. So, 
Nothing's for sale. I get asked all the time, probably daily. I get asked if something's for sale, and just no, I'm not. I'm not like that. I don't want to just sell cars because the market's high and just make a quick buck. I'm not about that. So Cal.Miller02 says, planning another meet after lockdown. Hell yes, man. Hell yes. I am looking so forward to doing a meet, like whether it's a full drive meet, uh, another Jap meet, me and my buddy Josh that uh, like to host all these meets, we want to do um, another car meet and then maybe a cruise after. The last meet we did was very successful. But yeah, we want to do another, another meet very soon. As soon as everything opens up, we'll do another meet. Now the weather's getting better. Today's a beautiful day. So now the weather's getting better. It's exciting to see that we can all go out soon as well. God, it's windy today. I keep hearing things knocking over in the garage. So, oh God. But yeah, Cal, keep a, uh, an eye on all our socials, or my socials. Uh, so Facebook, Instagram, I'll be keeping an update and when we're going to do the next meets and that, just be wary and uh, yeah, you'll see and hopefully get to see all you guys there, man. I love meeting you just in public, just driving around. Just have, I'll stop at the shop so people come up to me. And we had a bloke come and do the fence the other day and he freaked out because he didn't realize that uh, it was my house and he uh, he lost his marble. So shout out to you, uh, uh, Matthew. So Brandon RS 97 asks, what diff is the VL running? Love your videos. Thanks, dude. Uh, what diff is the VL running? That is running a, it's got a um, R31 uh, LSD in it. So it's just got like a, it's a stock 28 spline ball worn LSD in it from my old, or well not old 31, from the old diff that was in the 31. So it's a 3.7, not the best ratio, but um, it should hold up for now. I, I've still got the single pegger out of the VL. So if I've ever break that diff, I've got a spare diff. I'll eventually do the turbo rear end, but they're just so expensive for a diff. You spend two grand on the diff plus the axles and shit. It's crazy. For now, that that's uh that's what we're running so garrett doyle one asks will you supercharge the gu one day bro now hell yes i want to <laughs> yes fuck yeah i want i want to that's that's my end goal in this car i want to supercharge it and just have something that's just it just sounds off its head so you know good head work uh nice charger on it that way it revs to the moon when you hear it from the arse end but when it's coming towards you it just whines off its head and i want it to be that nice loud whine induction noise and then when it goes past it's that high revving sort of v8 sound that would be the ideal uh, sort of end goal for this vehicle. Um, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. So yeah, supercharging, 100%, man. Um, obviously, I haven't just got the funds for it, man. It's just it's so expensive. So maybe if the channel blows up one day, uh, it's just, it's hard. It's hard. Austin Young says, any car engine combo, what would you choose? Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Um, the first thing I think of is uh, my RX-7. Uh, the first thing I think of is putting a RC6B in there, so four rotor, um, but like have it exactly like the 787B one was. So we have the R26B with the uh, multi intake, multi length intake runners and uh, three plugs per rotor. So you have the two lead, one trailing, uh, you, oh, sorry, one lead, two trailing. Uh, you got the um, just the same sound that that car had because a lot of the four rotors that are built these days are you know using you know FC housings and that, and they do the the two plugs per rotor. They just don't sound as crisp as these uh, these Mazda speed ones were. So so yeah, uh, a four rotor in an FD, yeah. But obviously it's been done a lot. Um, so uh, another thing I think of is a one UZ in a Crusader. I love like a one UZ supercharged in like a Crusader or a one UZ in like a K70. That'd be cool. Um, something a big engine and small cars always just get me an old, an old like Dodge truck with like an LS7 in it That'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be sick. I get so excited thinking about that because that'd be just be oh, that'd be mind-boggling Chris.86VL asks what color are you going to paint the VL now? I get asked this one a lot too and uh, everyone says to leave it the the maroon or the burgundy I don't like that color and a lot of you will probably be upset with me saying this. I don't like the color of the GU um, I should have said it in my other video when I said what I do and don't like about it. I just, it just left my brain I don't like the color of the G. I'm not a big maroon slash burgundy person. My daily, my high end is um, burgundy. This is burgundy, and the VL is as well. I'll get into what color I want to paint this later. But the VL, I want to do the same color as my first VL was. Now that was the actual, the, the light red color. I forgot what the color code is, but put a photo of one up there now with the nice uh, silver bars and the trims and that. That's the color I want to paint it. So still keeping it red, um, but obviously just a lighter red, just so it pops more. That's 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 what I that's what I want to go with, man. Matt Donaldson asks, when's the engine going in the FD? Um, I'm glad you asked that because I've been wanting to talk about the FD for a while now. With my recovery getting better than that, um, I want to try and get the front end on the VL, move the VL forward because obviously I can't move the FD out anywhere because the VL's on jack stands in front of it. So I want to um, get the VL rolling out and then the FD is going to be sent off to my mate's shop. Now I know my cars don't go to shops much, but my radiator support is tweaked uh, 25 mil to the right, to, no, to the left, to the left, so to the passenger side. So I'm going to be sending it off to my mate's shop and he's going to be uh, doing a... Uh, putting on a rack and straightening the front out so we have it dead straight and we'll paint the bay and then we'll whack the engine and gearbox in So depending how long it takes for that work to get done Yeah, as soon as the car is back from the shop 
we'll, uh, we'll whack the engine in and start with the running gear. Because I've been off for two months, guys, I've just been ordering and ordering parts for the VL, the RX-7, even this and various other vehicles, but I've just been ordering parts. So my table inside, my uh, kitchen table, is just stacked with boxes. So it looks like Christmas in there, so it's pretty cool. So you can tell where my uh, money's been going when I've been off. Seb underscore 4K underscore says, when's the next VL vid? So with the VL, um, obviously this, is a problem, but the biggest problem I have, I've ordered the whole front end conversion for the VZ VT front conversion, brake conversion, sorry. Uh, so I have everything except for the conversion hubs. Now the conversion hubs have been a pain because the company I ordered them off, nobody has them in stock, absolutely no one. The one company that had them in stock, I uh, ordered them, uh, paid for them, and I got an email saying, hey, our engineer isn't at work uh, manufacturing these because of COVID, he got COVID or something. I'm gonna have to wait another month or two for these bloody hubs. So that's the biggest withdrawal and drawback for this uh, for this car at the moment, is just waiting on these conversion hubs. So once the hubs come in, guys, I'll be smashing out the VL video like no tomorrow. Um, I've been doing little bits and pieces here. I've actually restored the front calipers. I put that on my Instagram story the other day um, because I've been starting to use my hands a little bit. I still can't lift heavy. I can't lift heavy for a long time. But um, I've just been doing little things here and there to try and get that that up and going. So VR video will be very soon. As soon as those hubs come in, I'll start making a, a front end conversion series. P X R K E R R G or Pixerg. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I know who you are, man. Don't worry. He says, "Hey, man, if you had to suggest any car to buy for a first car, what would you suggest?" Now, this question is really hard to answer, and the only reason why is because it all depends on what you guys like want. Do you need a car for work? Do you need a car that you want to have as a, a you know as a, a daily? Do you want it as a weekender slash daily? Do you want to be to park it somewhere and not worried about it getting stolen do you want do you need a sedan do you need a hatchback do you need a wagon do you need a work ute do you need a you know a work wagon do you need something so it all corresponds with uh, your needs and what you want so my biggest advice for a first car is to get something that doesn't involve you having to be paranoid about it in that sense more so like you want to park it somewhere not worry about it or you want to be able to get door dings in a car park and not worry about it because being your first car you don't want it to be you know an eighty thousand dollar car that you door ding and shit like that you want it to be something that you you have a big learning experience in that way later on in the future you can get another car a nicer car and uh be a bit more careful so it's a bit hard but you know like if anyone asks me i'll sort of narrow it down to what sort of they what they like they say hey i want like a small front wheel drive you know sedan i'll say cool get a c lancer or something they're pretty cool they want a hatchback i'll say you know get a get an xl you know get something cool so it's hard it's hard it's hard but Suggestions, then yeah, I'll narrow it down and then find out, you know, what you like and go from there. Uh, you also ask, what is the best thing about your 31 in your opinion? Now, my own personal 31, my favorite thing about it is probably the road presence it gives. One of those cars where you're just driving on the road and literally like everyone just gives you a thumbs up, everyone just looks. Uh, people will follow me to servos, asking me to sell it. What is it? Older guys love it. Yeah, it just it just has this road presence. It looks cool and it goes good. And I'd say the second best thing about it that I like personally is its reliability has been unbelievable uh everyone asks me how reliable 31s well i've had it for nine years now and i've replaced alternator power steering one power steering hose and a battery and that's it nothing else on it and i've been abusing it since when did i get my license 2014 so i've been abusing it since then and it's you know three track days in still going hard it's still going hard i've, I've done a clutch in it too because uh the clutch was getting a bit how you're going because I've been abusing it. But that's it. That's it. Nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, one last question from you because you asked three questions. You got in there a bit cheeky. So do you have any plans for any new cars on the way? Maybe a Miata. Lol. Um, I have a big soft spot for MX-5s. Uh, like, they're funny. They're hilarious cars. They're one of those cars you look at, you just laugh. They just always look happy, always look sad. Um, I've driven one. I've been in one. They are pretty fun. I wouldn't go out my way to buy one because they're quite expensive for what they are. Um, they used to be cheap back in the day, but they're very expensive now. So yeah, I wouldn't go out my way to get one, but at the same time, if I had an option to get one like for a challenge or something and I got given one, 100% I have one. Uh, other cars on the way of the channel, um, I really want to get an AU Falcon. I'm just I'm just infatuated with them. They're just hilarious. I just want to like just send skids in them. Maybe a VS Commodore. I want to do something budget for the channel. Something just like, I want to throw no money out because I've got heaps of projects to finish. So I don't want to throw a lot of time and money into something else. Like I said before, I want to get like an old Dodge truck, do that up and have something to tow the cars around. That'd be sick. An old Dodge GMC or a Chevy, uh, International, International would be cool. So yeah, there's a few things I want on the way. It's just, it's just really hard to, to narrow it down. So keep an eye out because, um, I did. I have said in the past as well, guys, that um, me and my missus are going to be moving out soon because uh, we have some some news to announce. But uh, I, wanna, I really want to wait until shit actually gets done there, if you know what I mean, before I go out there and film where our new headquarters is going to be. Once we start to expand this area, uh, I'll definitely be getting more cars because I don't want to bring any more cars home. And then my mum actually has an aneurysm, so the last thing I want to do. I have eight cars here, so she's already uh, she's already tolerated enough. So Jacob underscore D Guacamole says. Miss you, bro. Planning on doing some road trips over the summer. Miss you too, man. It's been a while. Um, road trips over the summer, 100%. Um, me and my mate, Josh, Josh Cartelli, who actually asked the first question, uh, he 
we're going to try and uh, organize another cruise. Uh, so you guys that follow my socials, you probably know that we did like a big, uh, what was it? It was a Black Spur run with a few few guys and we had a lot of cars come out. It was a sick drive. Uh, so we're going to do like a, another, probably do a Great Ocean Road run, I reckon, would be the next one. Great Ocean Road or maybe, uh, you know, Arthur's Seat run. There'll be heaps of, heaps of uh, drives to do. Now the weather's getting better and hopefully lockdown sort of subsides. We can definitely uh, plan some more cruises and that coming up. Especially, oh, it's just so good seeing this weather coming up and that. It's just exciting. And uh, it's all starting to come more into fruition now that we can uh, go out and uh, have fun. But who knows when that's going to be though. All right, so David Perez says, Hi Mark, hope you're healing up good. Since you have a wide collection of cars and engine types, wondering if you'd consider a Subaru Boxer engine to add to your collection or you're just a Nissan fanboy. <laughs> well, I'll go and show you right now if you want a Boxer. Let's go for a walk. So excuse the wind, man, but um, behind me we have a 1998 GC8 Subaru. So this isn't actually my car. This is my girlfriend's, but it's seen better days. It needs a paint work, a paint job. But um, she's going to be getting a brand new car soon. So we're still not sure what car she's going to get because she wants something brand new. But this thing's still mechanically good. So uh, once she gets a new car, this is manual, uh, NA. I've got a WRX kit outside for it. So I've got the bonnet, the lip, and the rear wing. Uh, so we're going to do like a budget rally car, budget sort of WRX build, uh, maybe even find a motor for it. But this car has been, been pretty good. So yeah, once she gets a new car, this will be on the channel. This thing, like, it goes pretty good, it sounds good. We take it off-road a few times and, yeah, so you'll be seeing this very soon. So, uh, so stay tuned for this because uh, this thing should be a bit of fun and there's a sex sale. So I hope that answered your question, David. <laughs> so Duddles Outdoor and Adventures asks, uh, Hey mate, any plans on building a Hilux and doing a budget build or something like that or buy another Patrol or a JDM car to buy and do as a budget build? Uh, good question, man. Um, personally, I'm not a massive fan of Hiluxes. Um, I'm not a fan of like Utes. Uh, I respect them. I do love them. Like in terms of like when someone else has one, I absolutely love to you know see cool you know Hilux builds cool ute builds but for me like it's it's sort of like it's like the mx5 I wouldn't go on way to get one if i got one given to me i'll have fun with it in that terms i probably wouldn't get a Hilux. um you guys see my mates uh, Hilux on the channel a few times but um another patrol i'd love to get is like a gq um when i was when i was when i got my p's i always wanted a gq and um it was just one of those cars that were just they're just like tanks they just look cool yeah budget patrol would be cool a uh, budget patrol a budget four wheel drive would be good on the channel just to do like just go out and buy something cheaper marketplace and go thrash it in the bush and have fun with it for very little money so whether it's like a, a pajero uh one four wheel drive i'd love to get just for a laugh he's like a v8 land rover discovery um because they're just they're, they're cheap as hell they're all over the place they sound grouse you just take them out and just destroy them and another JDM car. JDM cars, it's hard to do JDM and budget unless it's like something really sh Um The prices of JDM cars are astronomical and you just can't justify spending the money on them anymore. It's just budget bills getting harder. And that's why people in the drift community are shying away from JDM cars and sort of going to cheap Commodores and, and, and Falcons and that now because it's just getting crazy with prices. It's just unbelievable. I never thought, like I knew one day it would happen. You know, owning all my cars, I knew one day it would happen. I just didn't think this soon, not this soon at all. So it's crazy. Keep an eye out. You know, I'm a very diverse person. I'll get whatever if, if it's cheap and I'll, I'll get it if it's it doesn't matter if it's toyota nissan mitsubishi i'll get it <laughs> so samuel thorne ask favorite four-wheel drive youtube channels you guys are probably gonna laugh i don't watch a lot of four-wheel drive youtube channels <laughs> you're probably gonna hate me for that but i don't know i just um like i'll watch four-wheel drive 24 7 here and there um i used to like their older stuff a bit more um like nothing to nothing against them but their newer stuff is very uh i don't know uh, without sounding like i hate it it's more like it's very uh like overproduction if you know what i mean like it's just but like, they still, they still stick to their roots. Uh, a lot of advertising in it as well, and which sort of gets gets on my nerves. Um, but I guess they got to make their money to uh, to keep producing the show. So I, I don't really watch them as much as I used to. Um, another, another channel I watch uh, is uh, Rome Life. Rome Life's really good. Aussie Arvos I do watch here and there. They're good, good lads. And obviously Sam Ellis from uh, Built Not Bought. Um, I've been watching his Land Cruiser series and his patrols. He's awesome as well, and that's probably about it. And um, I live in 4x4, um, Adam Adam Reed, he's, he's pretty good. So yeah, I don't watch them a lot, but I do, and uh, yeah, it is it is cool to see the diversity in guys from Australia doing four-wheel drive stuff, and it's awesome. I still don't class my channel as a four-wheel drive channel. Um, I'm sort of a bit of everything, but uh, the four-wheel drive stuff seems to do the best. So everyone always says you're my favorite four-wheel drive channel. I'm just like, am I a four-wheel drive channel? I didn't even think so, but I guess I do four-wheel driving and that more than drift covering and that, so we'll go with four-wheel drive channel. <laughs> Michael NG says, would you host the mountain run after this lockdown shit? Guess I will, 100%, me and Josh will. Keep an eye out on our socials and we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely be doing a uh, another one. X Aquabot says, future plans for the GE Patrol and R32. I've already gone through the Patrol. 
R32 is a good one because I want to do, I bought an R33 GDR gearbox for it. I've still got to put in. That way I've got a nice solid gearbox because the gearbox is in it's an RB20, even though it's got an RB25 engine. So once we do all the gearbox and that, and that all the, the running gear is all solid, uh, we'll be taking the head off, doing head studs and uh, head gasket, better hot side turbo manifolds, all that stuff, injectors, ECU. And we'll try to go for around a 350 kilowatt, maybe 400 if we'll get out of it with the oil pump and stuff done to it and the head drain. That's sort of the, the end goal I want to do for that. So you guys stick around for that. Um, it'll be an exciting car. It's it's a fun car as it is. Uh, so with all that power, it's going to be it's gonna be pretty cool. Oh, the sun's gone away. Now I'm sad. I think it's going to rain actually. It's Melbourne in a nutshell for you. So Will Nunn underscore says, what's the future of the LSGU? Now the future of it, pretty much just to keep it going and keep just making it a better car than what it is. Just keep adding to it. Uh, daily driving it is one thing. I like to actually drive my cars. I don't want to have a car that's, you know, only for the weekends and that. I want to drive it during the week if I really want to, or if not, do the grocery, have a bit of a grocery getter at the same time, take it to the tracks and abuse it. The tracks with it. The future of it is just to keep uh, making it better, keep adding to it, keep progressing it, obviously supercharging it later down the track, but just uh, maybe a paint job. Uh, I did say before, the color doesn't really, it hasn't really grown on me. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the color, so I'd like to paint it. Not a fan of Raptor coating. I don't like Raptor coating cars. I don't like wrapping cars, but if we do a paint job, I'd probably go, well, it's hard, it's hard. I don't know what to say yet, but a tuxedo black looks pretty cool. Like the Dubai spec uh, shorties, they look sick. We'll get to that bridge when we cross. Vic Rhodes, 1798 says, do you have a favorite car that you own? Um, this is hard, it's hard because um, if, oh God, it is hard. Favorite, I'd say the R31. Last time I think I said the, last time I think I said the R32, the R31 is just fun. Well, it's just fun. You just get in and you have, a, you have a good time every time. Yeah, probably my favorite car. Um, that or the 180, because it's my first, my high school sweetheart. So one of them, one of them too. If you notice, I keep looking to the left. It's because I'm looking at them right now. So I'm just trying to decide. Yeah, so 31 is my, my favorite. Hopefully the 180 doesn't hear me. And if I get back and the headlights are down, I'll be sad. Morgan underscore hog says, do you believe R31s will ever be worth anything? If so, why? Well, they are now, man. It's ridiculous, the prices. So I've had uh, 12 of them. Uh, so let's say back in the day, I'd, the most expensive one I paid for would probably be my actual one, which was a thousand bucks. It was a manual one. I had a silhouette manual, beautiful silhouette manual. That was, I paid 600 bucks for that. I had a TI, an uh, 89 TI, that was mint. It was a burgundy one, it was a mint TI. I paid 700 bucks for that. I had a uh, a Series 1 Silhouette Automatic. I went and bought that off an old lady for 650. Um, so I daily that a bit because I had reg on it. Um, what else? I had a, oh, the best one was uh, I went to my cousin's house up in the bush and uh, some guy there saw my Red 31 and said, oh, do you want to buy another one for a slab of beer? I got one on my property. So I slab a Carlton Light and I had a 31. So that was like 46 bucks. What else? Uh, I had a white, uh, I had a white Series 3 Executive Manual with uh, S13 front end. That was a thousand bucks. Every 31 I've had, it's been under a grand and to see them go for like really crappy ones for three to six grand, that means they're worth something now. So um, I've been offered upwards of 10 for mine, but I would never sell it, you guys know that. But I just think it's crazy because back in the day, you could buy, let's say HR31 Coupe, uh, GDSX, GDS, for seven to eight grand would get you one. You know, you'd buy a GDSR for 30. Uh, it's crazy. So that, I reckon they're worth something now. And why? It's just because they're inflating with every other car. They're inflating with Commodores. They're inflating with Japanese cars. Everything's going up and it's getting harder for young people to get involved in these cars without taking you know, big chunks of money, big loans out. And it's sad. To me, it's really sad because I want people to experience what I did when I was when I was young. And when I say when I was young, it was only like seven years ago. It's crazy, but times are changing and we need to get with the times, unfortunately. So I don't want to sound like an old, an old bastard, an old soul all the time. Rooster says, are you still doing the keto diet? Is it any good for you? Um, I'll put my phone down for this one. No, I haven't been doing the keto diet because of my injury. Um, I can't justify uh, A keto diet is quite mentally taxing uh, in terms of, you're depriving yourself of carbs. So your body, uh, your body doesn't like to deprive itself of anything and then it tells your brain to do stupid things like inject yourself with carbs. So I lost, uh, so when I said I was on keto diet, I did that for nearly just four and a half weeks. I lost about 10 kilos on that. A lot of you guys don't know, back before I even started thinking about YouTube, this is a few years ago, um, I was about 100, nearly 110 kilos and I'm not very tall. So that's pretty obese for my, my height. I formed a passion for bodybuilding and going to the gym. That was another big hobby of mine, still is actually. And um, I ended up losing uh, nearly 40 kilos. I, I lost, um, it was 30, 39 kilos. Uh, because I went from 108 to 69 kilos in about nearly a year, 10 months I think it was. Now that was doing two rounds of keto, caloric deficits, uh, just eating clean year round and training hardcore and just riding my bike. Everything sort of factors in. If you're gonna do the keto diet, I highly recommend if you're gonna do it, ease into it, do it for a couple of weeks and then ease out of it. When you get, when you do the keto, 
and you ease out of it, it's much better because you're not, your body's going to start holding on to shit that it didn't before. So if you eat a pizza after four weeks of keto, you'll probably put on the weight again really fast. I lost 10 kilos doing the keto, you know, just before my accident. I've probably put about five or six kilos on since then. And that's only just from sitting around and not doing exercise. I haven't even been eating unhealthy. Here and there, I've had some takeaway, but honestly, haven't really been eating unhealthy at all. Just um, just from sitting around, not exercising a lot. I'm starting to get back. I took the mountain bike for a ride yesterday because I can actually grip now, which is good. And I've been, I mean, my girlfriend been going for walks and that, and uh, a little bit of jogging, but my knee is really bad still, guys. My, my right knee is something really wrong with it. <laughs> so uh, I think I've done tendon damage or something because it's, it's, as soon as I start running, it tries to collapse on itself. So I need to really get that looked at, guys. But yeah, uh, keto diet, uh, it was really good for me, but you need to be really mentally switched on for it, for it to work, man. It's the easiest way to lose weight really fast. Michael Granson says, hey buddy, just wondering if you found a front diff for that bad boy yet. Hope your recovery is going well. Thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, well, here's a story about the diff. So something, something about diff centers just don't really like me. So I've had three separate diff centers I've gone to look at, literally gone to pick them up, and they've all been the wrong ratio. They've all been the wrong ratio. Uh, one diff was a 3.9, two other diffs were four ones, and I need a 4.3. So uh, I had another guy that had one for me, and um, I messaged him, and, he, and I said, hey, man, I'll come pick it up. And he said, nah, sorry, dude, I want to keep it as a spare, which is fair enough. He wants to keep it as a spare. So I'm still on the hunt for one, guys, and obviously I haven't had... I, can't, I haven't been able to drive to go pick one up, but I haven't been able to, obviously I can't lift one. So I need someone to come with me and help me, you know, get it out of the car, get in the car. So once I'm better, I'll definitely go out of my way to find one. Every other four, three I find is out in whoop whoop. So it's been hard, but as soon as I find one, I'm gonna get a couple of the boys around and help me lift it. I can't lift it in, so they're gonna help me do it all. So it'll be very soon, man. Hamish boys said, what are your plans with all the builds? Which ones will you sell? Which ones will you keep? Which one? So if we're talking long term, which ones would I sell? Which one would I keep? Um, so the 180 I'm keeping for life because it's my first car and it's my very very close to my heart. Same with the 31. The 31 was the first car I had on my P's because uh, I bought the 31 two months after the 180 in 2012. My 180 was still building it in 2014 when I got my license. So I had the 31 as my first P plate car. So that's going to be my... My, 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 my first two I keep will be them. My RX-7 FD is my dream car since I was really little and because it's my first FD, I'll be keeping that forever. Um, the 32 I want to keep forever because uh, it's the first car I actually built on my own completely because um, my dad moved to Queensland after I got my license with the 180 because we built that together. Uh, the 32 is the first car I ever built on my own. So that's that holds a, a really close sentimental value to my to my heart. Um, if I was to sell, uh, if I was to sell cars um, in the future, maybe the VL, uh, like later down the track, I don't want to sell it at all now. The Falcon maybe down the track. Um, this, I don't know about this because this, this 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 holds a special place in my heart too because this was the first car to actually grow the channel and it means a lot. To, so this car, I might just, uh, I might keep for a very long time, if not forever as well. So Eden Kerr says, would you do a coffee and car meet after this lockdown? Well, after this COVID stuff, 100% man. Like COVID's hit everyone different. Uh, you know, it's very mentally taxing and I feel for everyone that's lost their jobs. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here with two, two broken arms and I've still got income, you know, job and, I'm very grateful for that, but other people aren't so lucky. So I'd love to host a car meet and just get everyone's minds off what's going on around this this, this fucked up world and, and just have fun with everyone and get everyone together because I think that's the best thing about using this platform is getting everyone together, having a good community and people that have the same passion as you. So yeah, 100% I'll be doing a car. I love cars and coffee, like getting up early and going to get coffee and just talk shit about people with, with cars. And yeah, 100% we'll be doing one very soon. Preston Chambers says, hey mate, you've built an absolute rig. Reckon you'll sell it or keep it. Thanks, man. Um, I always say people, I never built this car. I revived it. So I just don't want to say like I built it, but thank you. It means a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll definitely keep it. Like I said before, I'll be keeping this for a while unless, you know, something drastic happens and I have to sell it to get like a dream car or something. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I'll definitely be keeping it. Fergus Brown says, how much money have you put into the patrol? And if you don't want to answer, no worries. Hope my arms get better. Thanks, man. If you go back, uh, it's a few videos ago, I did a whole cost breakdown on this car. So just to keep you up the loop, the car I paid five grand for because my mate, um, wanted to sell it ASAP because he couldn't, he had a gearbox problem, it, it didn't run. So I bought it for five grand, I actually made that five grand back, stripped my old GU patrol, so I made more money back pretty much straight away. And on top of the five grand of uh, buying this car, I put about, <coughs> sorry, I put about two grand into it since then. So that's uh, all the roadworthy stuff, uh, the bell housing adapter being fixed, the new tires, it didn't need much, and the roadworthy, the reg, that's all that included. So it owes me about seven grand altogether, about seven and a half with all the other stuff I've bought for it. You know, with the other centipede and stuff like that. Now, Shafez Beckenham says, what are your thoughts on the New Zealand drift scene? Um, I don't know much about the New Zealand drift scene, honestly. Uh, 
But uh, I've got a few mates that live over there that uh, used to live down here um, that, are, that were into cars and they show what's going on over there. And it's pretty, pretty gnarly. You guys are pretty laid back from what I've seen and uh, you're pretty crazy drivers. You got like Mad Mike and stuff over there. So thoughts on New Zealand drift scene. You guys all seem pretty chill. Uh, I'd love to go over there one day. Me and my girlfriend really want to travel to New Zealand. So I'd love to go over there one day and uh, and meet up with a bunch of guys and just have some fun with some cars over there. Because yeah, it seems like the scene over there is pretty cool. Even though I don't know much about it, from what I've seen, it looks pretty cool. Mitchell Fox says, what are some of the tracks you're most looking forward to once you recovered and COVID lockdowns are not an issue? Um, one of the best track I want to take this thing on is uh, Cockpit up at Telangi. Uh, I want to try to do that. And uh, Vic Range track, because they were the tracks we did last time and they were fucking gnarly. Two tracks at Dissa. There's a ladder track I want to try. That track is fucking crazy. Um, so I want to try to conquer those tracks with this car. But obviously not straight away. I want to learn the setup first before I start attacking the big boys. Zach Scott Parkinson says, What have you been ordering on Uber Eats during recovery? Well, I actually, I don't eat Uber Eats. Um, I, don't, I don't really get it that often. Um, it's just, it's bloody expensive. And I just feel like it's lazy. Every time I go... Uh, every time me and the missus are hungry, we, we're, like, we're like this old school couple that goes out and gets food, even though it's like five minutes down the road. I don't know. I don't really get Uber Eats. I think I've had it twice through my recovery. My missus has gotten pizza. I think that's not, I don't even think that's Uber Eats. I think she's gotten it through freaking um, the pizza delivery. So yeah, I not really, haven't really been getting Uber Eats. I've been trying to eat healthy too, but um, you know, I'm still putting away because I'm not exercising. It just goes to show what your body does. <laughs> As up 4 by 4 says, hey buddy, hope the recovery will be fast for you. So when your beast is all done, what's the first track you're going to hit up? I think the first track I'm going to be doing is probably going to be like some like pretty tame King Lake ones or Dissa ones. Every time I go out, I'm not very good at navigating. We've got my mate Dylan, which we call the navigator because he knows exactly where we're going all the time. So we'll get him to um, take us on some tracks. So something something pretty low key that we can uh, muck around with. He's actually building a Barra G GQ at the moment. So once his is done, this is done. We're all going to go out together and have some fun. So Brass, Brass Ashtray says, got a couple of Brass Ashtray actually talks. Maybe get a mate to come over and you could do a review on his car. Um, yes, I've actually been wanting to do that. Um, I've been talking to a few mates that have some pretty gnarly cars. Uh, to come get him on the channel and they're so for it. They're really for getting the uh, the cars on the channel and uh, my mate was over yesterday, he's got a pretty crazy 32 and he wants to uh, do a review on his car too. So uh, yeah, well, um, I don't want to do reviews. I'm not a review type person. I just want to get in the car, turn the camera off and show you how gnarly a car is. Yeah, we'll definitely um, we'll definitely be doing that very soon once my arm's better and I can actually drive a car properly and you know, people want to come over. We'll have some pretty serious cars that come on the channel too. So I'll be looking forward to that. 110 us, you into motorbikes? I'll show you. I come into the garage with me guys and we'll have a look at my little bikes. So this is my uh, 2009 WR450F. So I've had this bike since uh, 2009, we bought it brand new. It's just sitting here. I've haven't, I haven't ridden it since probably, God, I can't remember last time I went motorbike riding, maybe six months ago. I've got a brand new rear enduro tire on it. So uh, we're just waiting for the weather to get better and the COVID shit to fuck off. But um, yeah, it's sitting there. I've got my pit bike here. This is just like a 110, $150 marketplace bike. I sort of got for the missus. It's a auto sequential. But yeah, this is the um, 450 and I put a new headlight fairing on it, new rear tire, and it's ready to go. It's just sitting there. So yeah, bought that brand new in 2009 from Evolution Yamaha, and uh, it's just been sitting there. I've been taking it out. It's got about a thousand kilometers on the uh, on the odometer. I am into motorbikes. <laughs> Definitely be doing the motorbike video soon. If you guys want to see it, uh, we'll go out to the bush. Um, last time we went out, we went out to the national forest near where I grew up in Rushworth, and. There were some pretty gnarly rock climb and hill climbs up there we did. So I'd be really keen to put the GoPro on my chest on my helmet and take you guys out through there and show you some motorbike stuff. Because, yeah, some of the guys we ride with are pretty fun too. So very soon, guys, we're going to have some fun with motorbike. Look at this, guys. I stopped for a bit to let the camera charge, you know, have some strawberries. Yeah, it starts pissing down. Ah, oh, fuck. You can see my little uh, shade I've got on the uh, patrol because that's my studio. Let's get back into questions. So how you know you live in Melbourne? Uh, beautiful sunny morning. Literally 20 minutes passes and a torrential downpour. So back to questions. I actually got two of the same questions from Dax Jackson, Jackson Doddridge and Liam Young. When are you going to do a moto vlog? I have been waiting for one for ages. Obviously, it's hard to travel because everywhere we go to go motorbike riding is like an hour, an hour and a half out. Obviously, this is a problem. As soon as everything opens up and I'm injury free, I'll whack the trailer on the back of this load up the motorbikes of all the boys and we'll head off and uh my mate's got a nice big block of land up in the bush so we go there and uh sometimes venture off into the state forest and find some pretty cool tracks so very soon i'll um now that i know you guys really want one i'll definitely take the camera gear next time we go and uh, and film the uh the trip so keep an eye on that connie papalis says thoughts on a manual baxr6 um look they're fine um nothing wrong with them uh, obviously you're talking about um an, an, an na1 so when i first got my license my mate nick had a bf uh, xr6 and we had so much fun in that car we did skids we did dumb shit and it was a fun car and it never died baxr6 the thing you gotta look out for with those things obviously are the diff bushes uh if it needs to be done just do them it's a head fuck of a thing, but just do them. They are the most common thing. They flog out on them all the time. So that's pretty much it. Obviously being a barra, indestructible weapons, 
So yeah, I have fun in them, but yeah, watch those diff bushes, they're a pain in the ass. James Ballis says, hey man, love your videos, keep them up. Wondering, will you always stick with Nissan as a 4x4? Would you change it up with something different? Thanks, all the best, hope you heal up quickly. Thanks, man. Um, Yeah, well, I'd love to get a different range of four-wheel drives. Uh, obviously, 80 Series uh, is my other top four-wheel drive, uh, so I'll never always stick to Nissan. Uh, I'd like to you know, venture out. I'm not one of those people who say, like, I've got a patrol, fuck uh, a Land Cruiser, or I've got a Land Cruiser, fuck patrol. If you like that, then uh, you're in cars for the wrong reason. Look, there are some car manufacturers I dislike, and I won't, like, you know, I'm not a big fan of, like, Volkswagen Golfs and stuff. I'm not a big fan of, like, hot hatches and, and, and you know, and newer utes and that, but I like to be diverse and to have something of everything and to, you know, I love like quirks and features of everything, you know, so different different types of uh, quirks that different cars have, you know, something you know, There are cars that are going to be uh, crap crappier than other cars, but in the same time every, everything's everything's a car A car is a car has an engine. You just gotta you just gotta be open-minded with cars You gotta enjoy them and if you're passionate about cars, you'll love everything. So um, yeah I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, yeah, venturing off into Land Cruiser uh, territory, uh, you know, Land Rover uh, Mitsubishi Pajero would be fun. Uh, yeah, a few, a few, there's, there's a few out there uh, that I want to I want to try try with, and maybe one day we'll have them on the channel. Uh, Aussie Allen 65 Hilux Club. Good day, Anthony. Uh, he said, "Would you put 37 sticky treps on the patrol and reduction gears in it?" Uh, look, if like budget wasn't a big thing, uh, that'd be pretty cool. Um, I don't really want to overcomplicate the car too much uh, for what it is. Being a, you know, I drive it on the road all the time. Uh, if I ever went like competition style, yeah. Probably, um, yeah, and if budget wasn't an option, of course, yeah, 100%. Joseph Moore, Joseph underscore Moore 25 says, how old were you when you got into cars? Uh, oh, um, probably since, I, I can't even remember how old I was because I was too young because like my dad had the drag cars and that back in the day, so I was pretty much a petrol head from day one. Um, so I've been around cars and racing and motorsport heritage my whole life, so that sort of just sparked me into, into cars. And um, I don't know how old I was, I, I probably when I was old enough to realize that I genuinely was into cars for a reason, uh, you know? I wasn't just like, you know, fascinated because I was a kid and I had a, you know, a, a mind full of wonder. It was more of a, you know, you just, you can tell when you're passionate about something from a very young age, you know? A lot of people get into cars, you know, later on, like, you know, in their 20s and 30s, and nothing wrong with that. You know, when you get into stuff from a young age, you really, really try and uh, push yourself to do better in that in that field, that aspect of what you're into. So, yeah, it's hard to tell what age I was because I was very young. And he also asked if you could not have a patrol, what kind of 4x4 would you get? It was an 80 series for sure, 80 series. Ricky Gabriel says, what is your opinion on 35s on a 2.5-inch lift one or what? On a Y61GU, what mods do you think to put on an RD28 to give it a bit more power? So, the first bit of your question, 35s on a 2.5 inch lift. I guess that's pretty common. A lot of people run 35s or 33s on a 2 to 3 inch lift. So, that's pretty common there, man. Uh, it depends if you're dialing it. If I was to daily it, I'd probably run 33s. Uh, but if you're going to be like always going out in the bush or you live in the country, 35s would be fine. Not, not, nothing too aggressive in that if you're going to daily the car. RD28 to get a bit more power. I wouldn't give it... RD28 a bit more power. Um, I think like a TD, they need to stay standard to sort of, you know, survive. Um, my 28, all it had was a, uh, it had boost T on it. So it bumped up to about 14 PSI and it had a stainless, not stainless, mild steel three inch exhaust. So from the dump all the way back, cat delete. That's pretty much it. That's all it needed. And that gave it a bit more oomph, but it was still slow as hell. I don't recommend putting in more power because you need to throw lots of money in RD28 just to sort of get it to anywhere near almost a stock TD standard. So yeah, keep it standard. And if it blows, put something else in it, man. That's what I can tell you. Bailey Paget says, hey, I'm just wondering if you want to do a four wheel drive day trip with some subscribers. And if so, where would you want to go? I would be keen. Said my rig is a GQ chopped with a 55 stroker. That's fucking cool. <laughs> GQ with 55 and chopped, that's that's mad. Yeah, uh, 100%. That's one thing I really want to get done like after this is all done. Because obviously the first trip I want to go out, I just want to go out with close mates and you know just enjoy ourselves in terms of Learning the car, learning, because uh, heaps of other boys have built four-wheel drives too that we go out with, so we want to all learn our cars together. We don't want, you know, the too too many people around just to sort of make it a stressful day. When we uh, when we get used to the cars and uh, and and want to venture out a bit further than that, we'll definitely put together something with all the subscribers. Now, I've said this in the past, um, I'll probably have over maybe 200 plus messages of people um, saying, hey, I want to go out on your next road, on your next. So I'll probably be selecting a few, let's say maybe five to 10 people on a per trip, uh, just to make it more realistic, because it's really, really unrealistic to have so many trucks. I mean, we can but it's just it's it'll make it a big fucking kerfuffle so yeah what we'll do is we'll get uh, a, a few trips going where we just get subscribers and um i'll put it on my socials and whoever sort of comes up there first that hasn't been out with us before they're more than uh, welcome to come out with us and then um don't worry they'll, they'll, you won't miss an opportunity they'll, we'll go out all the time and um, even if this thing breaks or something, I'll be going out with the boys. So come out with us. So don't worry, man. We'll all have someone. Everyone out there will be having a go, whether you have a four-wheel drive or not. So yeah. So just keep an eye out on socials and that when I uh, when I sort of do it and um, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll sort of make it known on videos too that we're going to be doing it soon. Kalen Lanham says, would you ever turbo the big old GU? Now, obviously, you know I want to supercharge it, but uh, the turbo will be for the VL, so that'll be our list turbo. This will be supercharged, so I don't want to have two of the same thing. As much as I do like the turbo four-wheel drive LS, you know, one car I would love to build is an LS Turbo GQ, um, that if, if, you know, budget wasn't an option. I'm still a very small YouTuber in that, so I don't earn a lot of money from it. So budget, you know, is one thing that sort of holds you back, especially when you, you know, you're building a property. So Ethan O'Keefe says, have you got any more 4B builds coming up? Really enjoyed watching the patrol and don't want it to stop there. Well, no, nah, it's not going to stop there, man. It'll always, even with the patrol, even with this thing, like I'll be making contact with it until probably the day I die. 4B builds coming, I'd love to do, like I said before, budget build. Um, I want to do an 80 series build so bad, so I have a bit of diversity. So like one time take the 80 series out, another time take this out. And then maybe even have like a like a budget uh, GQ or something. That'd be sick. So, yeah, it, it never stops here, man. And it's never ever going to stop. I always want to keep expanding, and I don't want to be stuck in the same thing forever. Yeah, dude, uh, 100%. There'll be more to come. Jack Whelan says, "Hey, mate, got any tips for someone looking to get an R31 and into the drift scene?" Cheers. Uh good. Um, good that you want to get a 31. It's still one of the budget drift cars, even though their prices are high. They're still one of the most uh, budget drift cars today. Um, so if you're going to get a 31, my tips would be get something cl close to standard. Get something as stock as you can. Try trying to get unflogged. If it's a dedicated track car, maybe get you know, something that's already had some work done to it. But if you want to drive on the road, get something stock. It'll just save you the hassle. Get something, uh, you know, if you could find a manual one, they are pretty expensive now and manual conversions are harder to, getting hard to find. Uh, you can find something that's, you know, already done in that aspect. that will be good. But if you can find, you know, something almost grandpa spec, like a blank canvas to start off, that'd be sick. And getting into the drift scene, man, the, be the best advice I can give you is just don't overbuild your car for your skill level. So many people I have seen it just overbuild their cars for their skill level. And it just takes them so much longer to get the hang of it because you've got to up your skills and your your confidence and your commitment in those in those fields to get that car to do what what you want it to do. Honestly, my car, I've been drifting for a while now, and I still just have a pretty basic setup. It's got 33 control, just to bump lock a little bit. It's got a 411 rear diff, lock diff, inline hydro, and a cage. That's it. That's all it needs. And I can drift that all night long. And you, you have fun in it. You don't have to overcomplicate yourself. You don't spin out all the time because you ha have to get 90 degrees lock every time. It's just one of those cars where you just you just really, really learn in them. You really learn them. I learned in that at a young age in that. So, And then once you get into the big boys, you know, big turbo, big lock, that's when you start to, you know, your skill level goes up, you know. Uh, Jacob de Guacamole says, any big ideas for content you'd like to make? Mountain runs, road trips. Yeah, 100%, dude. Uh, yeah, mountain runs and road trips would be sick. Uh, big ideas for content. Like I said, I want to do like old car revivals as well. Um, I love doing them. They're, they're just they're just so rewarding to get old cars that haven't run in years running. Uh, yeah, four-wheel drive stuff. Obviously, I want to keep expanding with that. And uh, maybe even do some competitions. Uh, this car actually uh, won a few trophies back in the day when it uh, when it was with the old owner. So I'd love to you know do some uh, competitions in it. it would be cool. Um, yeah, so there's heaps of content to come. There's so many things I want to do, but you know, there's so many limiting factors in terms of funding, uh, time. I still work, you know, building a property. Oh, it's, it's, it's hard at the moment. So the future always holds wonderful things and hopefully we get some, uh, some cool things happening. And I, I think we will. I think we will. I'm pretty, I'm pretty always <laughs> ambitious person. Joel Fabian says, what parts did you use for the lift? Did you use drop boxes, adjustable pan huds? In ETC. So I got the car pretty much with all the lift and that in it. So uh, it has a superior pan hard, adjustable pan hard rods. It's got drop boxes. It's got uh, no sway bars. It's got Dobbison's four inch springs and Fox Desert shocks in it. Uh, and it's got all the uh, suspension. Uh, the top has braced and everything in that diff bracing. So it's got a few goodies on it. It's ready to go. I've never had a car like this. that's had all this stuff on it. My other patrol was literally a two inch lift and exhaust. That was it. And 33s. It's going to be a whole new ball game for me. And I can't wait to see how it all reacts out there in the, in the, uh, in the mudlands. Mason Bulditude says, what's the plans for the VLLS? Is it going to be boosted and can't wait till it's going till it's done going to be sick yeah so the vlls the plans are to get the car running um i've got a mate of mine that wants to do the wiring the computer and all that stuff done um the plans for it for now is going to be ls with a t56 behind it so it's manual and then we're going to have um you know nice headers a nice clean engine bay and then get it engineered as a just an ls manual vl once it's engineered and registered on the road i would like to take it off the road then do a turbo uh we'll do uh, LS single turbo and yeah do like the old you know flip the LS headers run the turbo have a nice big tur turbo sitting at the front do all the battery and everything in the boot just have it nice I want it to be nice and presentable nice and stockish looking on the outside maybe with some widened interceptors or um 
you know, I'm ignoring whether to do a reverse cowl or not, but I just wanted to have a nice, you know, street presence and um, it just have a lot of power when you get on. I wanted to scare the shit out of me. So my missus is helping me build this car too because she wants to learn on this car. So um, definitely we're going to have it drivable for her too. So we don't want it to be too crazy, but at the same time, I still want to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> so that's long-term plans, man. That's still not for a long time. So Brock Butler says, would you recommend an LS1 powered patrol? Also, hope you have a speedy recovery and get better soon to pump out some awesome content. Thank you, dude. Would you recommend Alice One Patrol? Hell yes. <laughs> uh, so before I had this car, I've never driven Alice Patrol, never been in one. And that's why when I first drove this around the block in that video, I think it was the third video in, second or third video when I first got this car, you can genuinely see my reaction, how I was genuinely like a short shock. Like I was, I've been in like fast TDs, like, you know, but nothing crazy. This car is definitely the fastest patrol I've ever been in. And yeah, it's just, it, it's... I couldn't recommend it enough. It's it's such a smooth, comfortable car. It's just so quiet compared to my clunky RD28. And when you get on it, it just lifts that front left-hand corner up and it just goes. And it's just, in the wet, it's just a handful to drive. And I couldn't recommend an LS1 Patrol enough. And if you want to do it, I say just budget yourself in what you're going to spend, what you want to do. If you can do it yourself, that's a big plus. But if a shop has to do it, just budget everything together and figure out what your plan is and then just attack it. That's the best thing I can say. But yeah, I highly recommend LS Patrol. And if you find one out there that's cheap that you can do it up like this, do it. If you can find a Barra Turbo one as well, they're sick as well. They're another one, another four wheel drive that I love, a Barra Turbo swap. Even a 4.5 or a 4.8 turbo, they're fucking cool. Wes Bennett says, I owned this car two owners ago, keen to see it pumping some tracks again. Well, I guess you mean this, and that's sick. Um, that's awesome to talk to see the old owners. I've been talking to uh, Jay and uh, and Russell and Sam. So uh, yeah, I think you, Sam might have bought it off you, Wes. Uh, I'm not sure. But the car has had a few, I think it's had five or six owners since Jay. So it's cool to see everyone still um, watching this car and appreciating it, you know, it's not being taken to the scrapyard because um, I really want to go and show uh, Jay and Russell this car because um, they, they've been hounding me for the, to bring it back to them just for nostalgic. So if you ever want to see this car, if you're in Vic, I'd love to show you, dude, because, um, yeah, I want to share it with everyone and, and uh, you know, show it all cleaned up and uh, and happy again because it was it was getting a bit sad, a bit tired, and I didn't want it to, you know, have a have an inevitable future where it was turned into a tin can. So uh, thanks for watching, dude. Appreciate that. Jared Knight has a nice comment. He just said, legend, hope your recovery is going sweet, bro. Thanks, man. It's been going really good. Uh, it's It's been going... Uh, like the last few weeks have been the most noticeable recovery wise like in terms of movement like I can twist and that again I can uh, I've been riding my bike slowly so just being able to clench I've got more grip strength so it's been very exciting but I get this cast off in uh, two weeks and then I start my rehab so that's really exciting to actually get this all working again but I've lost significant amount of size in this arm like uh, mu like muscle so it's it's kind of it sucks like usually i have my veins popping out and that there and there's just nothing so I've, I've had a lot of muscle atrophy and um you know a lot of strength loss like if i pick up you know let's say a, an orange in that and do a couple of reps my arm burns because it's just has no you know engagement and this arm sort of the same because like you know because i fractured this one too i haven't been lifting heavies i've lost a lot of size in my arms but you know what can you do hopefully muscle memory comes back and i can build up again and be be strong Lockie Hale says, hey, mate, love your content. I recently got into Forbes and I'm looking at buying a GU. What is your advice for looking and buying a GU? Should I go for a TD, RD, or ZD? Any other advice or tips? Cheers. Um, thanks, man. I'm, yeah, it, it, I'm flattering that you come to me for advice. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not the biggest four wheel drive expert out there, but um, you know, I know people that have had them and had nightmares with what. But for me to give advice to to someone, I would say definitely stay away from an RD or a, or a ZD uh, if it's like a pre common rail. Uh, I just hear horror stories, but you know, other people say you know ZDs are great engines; they last forever. RDs are great engines. It's such a hit and miss. You know, if you push them to the limit, they can go. Um, personally, if I was to get another patrol, I would get either a TD, a TB45, or a TB48. They'd be my three choices. Um, but it's completely up to you, man. If you want to get an RD, like RDs are cheap. To me, they're cheap for a reason. ZDs are cheap for a reason too. But like a later ZD or a, a TD would be would be pretty good for if you want to go. You want to stay diesel. So Patrick Meredith says, "Hey, man, do you think that doing an engine conversion in a patrol like Alice or Barrett is worth it?" Uh, worth it in terms of like if your if your patrol is having problems or you've blown an engine, 100 percent it's worth it. Um, it all depends on your budget. Let's say you blow a ZD or you blow an RD. A lot of people out there will struggle to to come to terms with the fact of uh, you know paying two three grand for another head or whatever, and then they'll want to do a whole another motor conversion. And then you know you look into TD conversions or something, and then you know you go okay, an engine's ten grand, and you got to change your gearbox, and you got to change the engine mounts, and you got to change the fucking yokes on the drive shafts and all that shit, or the pinion flanges and shit. And you go okay, <clears throat> that's going to be upwards of fifteen grand without any labour. So a barra you can get out of a wrecked you know BA Falcon for cheap, and uh, you buy the conversion bits. Same as an LS, you buy like I bought my LS for a thousand bucks when I had it 
<clears throat> you know, a mug's conversion kit's what four and a half grand. Then you're wiring your computer. You can do it under ten grand, you know, if 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 you if you're really hands on. But if it's worth it, if your engine, if you're having trouble and you have the budget to do a conversion, I would highly recommend it. Um, you will have a lot of fun. Uh, you'll have way more fun and. I just think these cars should have come factory with a V8. These cars could, should have come factory with a six-cylinder turbo. That's just how they should have been. That's just my opinion. But at the end of the day, you can convert them and make them better than they ever have been. So there's a lot of things you can do, and would I recommend it 100%. So we're coming up to the last questions now, guys. I hope this video hasn't gone on for too long. I think this is a lot longer than the last question and answer, but we'll finish up now. Joe Joey Robertson says, if you could put bulk budget into two of your vehicles, what would you pick? Um, bulk budget uh, would be the R32. I'd make it just insane power. Um, you know, RB25, 30, big external gate, just big power. Uh, and yeah, another car would be the RX-7. I'd do a four rotor in that. Uh, that'd be a bulk budget car for sure. Definitely those two, 32 and the uh, FD would be my two cars I'd put like all my money into um, to make them crazy. So last question is from Jet Petula. He says, will we ever see any custom work or any suspension work down the track, such as a four link, etc.? Um, yeah, that, that all comes down to budget. Uh, if I really want to go that far with this car, um, if I had, you know, if I had bulk money to spend on it, that'd be pretty cool to go like, you know, full like, you know, Dana axle swaps or, you know, four link and do something crazy. Um, but yeah, like depending on how this channel grows, how this car goes, you know, you never know what the future can hold. If money was no issue and I had, you know, bulk budget, then yeah, 100% I'd love to do something like that. You know, portal axles, all that crazy shit. But then at the end of the day, the car's going to be so like, you know, overbuilt and unstreetable and that sort of, you know, shies away from what I want to do with it. But it's hard, it's hard to tell now, but you know, it's, it's, something, it's something really cool to look into. But yeah. All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to end today's video and clear everything up. That was my second question and answer. Um, I was going to do my next question and answer at 10,000 subs, but because of the injury, I thought, why not? We'll just keep the channel alive a little bit while we wait for this crappy situation to heal up. And I really appreciate every single person that sort of stuck around and, you know, you all know what I've been going through and you all are really supportive and um, you haven't been hounding me to make to, to, to smash out videos when you know I physically can't. So I appreciate you guys for that and uh, appreciate everyone watching. Uh, it's been crazy last two months and a crazy road overall for this whole uh, YouTube ordeal. So I um, hope to meet every single one of you in the future and talk to you. And, uh, you know, I'm always on social media. So if you ever want to have a chat, just message me on Instagram or my Facebook profile and we can talk. If you're feeling down, hit me up. We'll talk. Uh, we all go through it. So just let me know. And I like to, you know, every person that messages me, they always get surprised that I reply. Dude, guys, I am the same person as you. I am another person. So don't be surprised that I'm replying. I'm another person. I try and reply to every single person. Not I try. I do. I reply to every single person. Sometimes I have paragraph conversations after paragraph with you guys at nighttime and you guys really appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys reaching out to me and talking to me because it means the world that you are actually watching me. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully the next video we'll be doing car stuff and uh, very soon having this big fucking nugget out on the tracks and uh, putting the smiles on everyone's faces because everyone's been waiting for almost a year for that. So take care everyone. Thank you for all your questions and we'll see you in another video. Be sure to like and subscribe as always and take care. Bye.